Welcome folks to the 29th of May, right? Did I get that right? 29th of May, Aries Working Group call. This is High Village Call. So the antitrust policy and the code of conduct are in effect. Um, the link to the agenda is in the chat. You're welcome to make any changes uh, that are useful to the community. Don't worry if they don't show up on my screen because of the lack of the live editing issue. Um, we, well, uh, my PC fan just went nuts randomly. That's strange. Um, but uh, we, uh, anyway, the your notes will actually show up, which is just fine. Uh, after after merging, um, I should drop into edit mode to make that happen. Um, welcome to so the Indies list. Um, see, I just copied this from last time. That's been less happy since uh, since the little edit thing has happened. It's totally optional, but helps people get in, in contact with you and over there when the topic was discussed if they want to confirm this or something. Uh, any uh, one new today that would like to introduce themselves or announcements that we don't have on the list but should? Since we do mention IIW each time it comes up, um, I'll mention DICE, which is IIW in Europe. And so anyone planning on going, it is in, I guess, three weeks from this week, and I will be there. So I'm, I'm looking forward to meeting folks from Europe that haven't been able to make it over to IIW. Along with EIC and Identity Week, all three are coming up, and I'm going to be at all three. Yeah. Uh, can you still hear me? Yes, you, Stephen. Were you were jumbled for a while, but you seem to be back now. Can you hear us? I'm back now, but I've lost control of my mouse. My screen is frozen. That's interesting. I can't hear you. But I can't like take notes or add anything, which is super curious. I don't know what's going on there. Um, shoot, and I I think release status and work updates was next before I unceremoniously became unable to do anything. Um, things are going very well. Lots of things are getting added into Aries Cloud Agent. It's a fair amount of technical debt removal and maintenance that's going on. And in particular, DependBot fund, um, I think almost every repo is um, dealing with DependBot stuff. So hopefully we get a handle on it in the short term. Um, Patrick St. Louis has volunteered to grab all of our DependBot updates and put them into a single PR and, and uh, hopefully get us past that. So um, that's where Aries Cloud Agent Python is. And then a new release um, will be posted Probably at that point, I think we're pretty close. We've only got a couple of issues that are hanging out there. So that's where we are. Cool. There's uh, there's only oh. one on the Aries RFC repo, but uh, that I saw earlier, but, but uh, yeah. yeah. Um, it has a by the way, one code. more thing to, to mention, um, the Indicio team has added a um, DIDCOM V2 um, PR and uh, w which will probably merge. It currently gets a message, a, a is able to receive a DIDCOM v2 message and send back a problem report in um, uh, in DIDCOM v2 flavor. So it, it's not useful yet, but the idea of getting it in there, being able to send DIDCOM v2 messages to a, an Akapai agent and have it able to um, at least understand it, realize the process, and then um, so the next PR will obviously extend that out. But really good progress being made by Micah and team. Very cool. Um, I would like to yes, related to that down in the, in the agenda, I would like to float the idea of an interopathon target with both the retirement of unqualified DIDs and DIDCOM v2 adoption. I think those things are look to be arriving on a similar time schedule, which would be really cool. Anyway, any other release status work updates folks want to share? Uh, 
All right. Uh, this is a bit of a jumble. I have reorganized it a little bit. There's a handful of things that I'd really love to get cleaned up and done today. Um, and uh, and so, but we'll definitely have time for some open discussion stuff, which has actually been really productive the last couple of weeks. Um, and so I'd love to to be able to continue with that too. But 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 uh, we have some business on the on on the uh, the unqualified dids and the uh, the the uh, transition to out of band and did exchange. Um, that's, that, that, uh, that we can address and probably merge and also the VDR proxy stuff as well. Um, and so, uh, so really cool. And then, uh, somewhere in here I have, well, that might not have, not have gotten saved in, in all the fun. Um, but I have some, uh, I'd love to float the idea of, of sort of a midsummer interopathon with those targets that I previously mentioned. Uh, any other stuff that should be on the agenda but isn't, or other changes or priority adjustments we want to make? All right, let's dive in. Um, so the unqualified did transition of uh, this PR, I think we merged. Um, Yes, this been this has been merged. So um, this has been done, and so this can the whole thing can probably shrink to just a a, a status. Um, there's the did indie handling stuff that was that was brought up. Um, the idea here is to uh, get this deployed. Now that we have code support, um, you know, for these things, is to is to update our active deployments for this. The target for that is the end of of. Uh, um, next month, or rather the beginning of the month right after that one. But um, so we're, we're, we've got about a month left. And of course, we can adjust that date if necessary. But the goal is to uh, get this deployed so that anyone who wants to continue having those interoperable features um, can do so cleanly. And so we'll, we'll be periodically reviewing, I suspect, in two weeks after EIC. Oh, there's an announcement. Um, next week, both Stephen and I will be at EIC. Um, uh, the European Identity Conference. Is there anyone that wants this meeting to exist bad enough to run it in our absence and be a guest host? I guess that means no meeting, which is just fine. I just want to give people the opportunity if they really wanted it to exist to be able to to pick up and handle that. Okay. So uh, we'll need we'll need to review this uh, probably in two weeks after EIC and get a temperature of where folks are on on, uh, on deployments and see where we are, um, so that we can update the status on that and 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 continue our process of of making unqualified dids go away. Um, any comments on the did indie handling uh, aspect of this? Um, we we mentioned that, that there was some credo issues and they're using it like differently. But there's a like a quick fix and a long fix. Anyone have any uh, any any news on on the did any handling in Credo? No one at all. I'm trying to remember who brought this up originally. Um, it must be on vacation. Uh, I'll persist this uh, another round and we can see if we can resolve that conversation. Um, related to the out of band did exchange community coordinate update, we had encouragement by James, which I appreciate to, uh, to clean that up. There is a, a PR that I have. We talked about it last week. Um, James pointed out some, uh, some other changes that would be, uh, that would be useful. And so I've made a couple of other changes. Um, and so I added a note to the connection protocol readme because I noticed when I was reading the this CCU that there needed to be a deprecation notice added to the connection protocol to not use the invitation messages. And so this is now actually there. Um, he also mentioned uh, that according to our, our process, we needed to move from accepted to adopted. That was in his, his message there. Um, and uh, I also clarified that in step two that we remove the the did exchange piece of this because that was something that was poorly handled back in the early days of this uh, of this effort um, where uh, we we decided to only transition out of be as, out of band as part of this and leave did exchange well enough alone um, and then we didn't update the documentation appropriately so um, this has been 
this has been modified to just indicate the adoption of out-of-band out of protocol support, just in clarity of, of what we were doing anyway, um, which means that the full change uh, looks like this. There's, of course, the one addition to the connection protocol as part, as part of this, and then we have uh, you know these changes here uh, to uh, to mention those, and of course the dates um, that we're mentioning that we're in step two with the target completion date. That's also a little over a month out. Any feedback on this PR, um, or more specifically, anyone opposed to merging it at this point? Stephen, it wants an approving review. Is that you? Sure, I can take a look at it. Yeah, let me hit update real quick, and then uh, and then if you could take a look at that, I think it's pretty straightforward. Um, but that will be okay. yeah. It just needs an approving review. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Okay, that is done, um, which is real great, and we'll check up on the status of that as well, just to to make sure that connection invitations are well and thoroughly dead. Um, and um, and then we can, um, and then we can update the status on that to to make it clear to folks who are working on stuff. Um, did come v2 adoption? We just covered. I'm I'm going a little bit out of order, um, and so uh, there was some mention of the fact that uh, the credo uh, did need a little bit of attention, but it had the beginnings of did come v2, um, and this will be become more important, particularly as we set a target date for. An interopathon, I think, would be really useful. Actually, while Stephen's doing the other thing, and I won't talk about the VDR proxy just yet because he's he's focused there. Um, let me generally float this idea and get some feedback on the idea of an of an interopathon. We it's been a little while since we've had one, um, and there's a few random at this point uninteresting reasons why that hasn't happened. Um, we had intentions of it, but the the, the dependent events never occurred. Um, just because of, uh, of of clarity and changing of priorities. So one of the thoughts that I had is that um, demonstrating interoperability post uh, unqualified DIDs I think carries some significant value. And um, given the adoption progress of DIDCOM v2 in Acapi and uh, and and then demonstrating that interoperability with Credo I think would be really powerful. Um, bringing uh, these you know packages fully into DIDCOM v2 land. Uh, clarifies and simplifies a, a, a variety of things. No longer do we need to figure out how to handle it in V1 and V2. There's just V2 moving forward, um, which would be really great for, for that. Um, and uh, and then all sorts of really fun things happen, like the, the, the DIDCOM demo, which is written in DIDCOM V2, now becomes something that could be used uh, directly with Akapai. Um, as an example, uh, Verimo is also a project that has been DIDCOM v2 from the start, uh, but making, uh, but I actually involving Verimo in the interopathon could be a cool, uh, a cool step there um, to sort of show all of these things working together. Um, and so the, I think that combined effort could be really neat. Um, and we may have different aspects of it. Uh, you know, obviously those that never used unqualified DIDs don't really need to worry about the unqualified DID part. But the DIDCOM v2 part would be really cool there as well. And so targeting kind of mid-summer-ish uh, places us kind of in between, in the middle of between spring and fall conference season. Um, and, uh, and I think would be a really nice time to sort of target that um, for this, you know, sort of fundamental update there. Um, so uh, I'm thinking a relatively targeted interopathon. Um, and we could, of course, have some optional interop targets that go into more advanced stuff as well. Um, and I was imagining this as a virtual event, um, uh, probably across two days where we where we get together, um, we try stuff, and then we have a chance to make some progress, and then we come back and we try stuff again. Um, and uh, and if we and if we do that, then we can get into debug sessions. We can work out what the issues are. And even if we're uh, we don't yet have those changes in the main branches of everything, we have um, at the end of it, we have PRs that um, that can be used together, and we can document that you know uh, you know using this PR of of this project and that PR of that project, then we were able to achieve the success that we were looking for. Um, and so that's the general idea. Any feedback, thoughts on timing or scope or whether this is a good idea at all or anything at all?
Yeah, this sounds great. Um, again, I've been, I, you know, we, we wanted to do one of these from the marketing side, um, you know, for a little while, just because this is a great, again, shines the, a great way to shine the light on the work that folks are doing, the type of kind of um, community, like offerings that we we give the community so that folks can bring together what they've been working on um, with other folks and, you know, see that, you know, see the magic happen, <laughs> so to speak, um, of, of, you know, interoperability of, you know, issuing and verification and all that good stuff. So um, happy to help, you know, support the effort, get this together. It does take a bit of, a bit of work to get folks you know, signed up and paired off and, you know, put the different kind of rooms together and set up notes and we have note takers and all that good stuff. So it's a really good use of time. Um, so if we're looking at the end of say June or July, let's say the last couple of weeks in July, we'd want to kind of get it, start getting folks signed up, you know, maybe after, after y'all get back from Europe, from the conference circuit. So maybe, you know, give it a few weeks and then we can start um, putting together some sign up forms and whatnot um, for folks to join us if, if anybody's interested. I like that. Um, so let me start taking notes because this is important. Um, Um, uh, potential target end of July. And then uh, scope. We'd want to make sure that the scope is achievable. If we set an unachievable scope and deadline combination, then it's, it's going to be an unexciting event. Um, so we want to make sure that that's, that's an achievable thing. And again, we're not looking for, for main branches to have um, the updates necessarily, but, uh, but, but get to the point where we have sub branches or, you know, we have PRs against it, that, that will make, uh, things work and then we can make that happen. So, uh, yeah, in the past, I think folks just kind of come with what they have. And then we started with, you know, make a connection and then, you know, who wants to issue or, or somebody's just there just to bear or whatever, the, you know, whatever the case may be, whatever they want to, whatever they want to try out. Um, so if folks have did come V2 and they want to, you know, set up a connection and then, you know, send messages or something like that, that would be amazing. Um, but even if it's simpler than that, that would be fine too. If folks are, are still, you know, at, at, you know, kind of more, they want they want more simple tests that that would be fine too. I don't want to exclude anybody. So whatever whatever folks really would love to test against somebody else, I think you know we'd be open to just about anything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. I think the main thing would be you know uh, connecting and something like a trust ping or a basic message or some other um, mm -hmm. you know basic feature of that uh, discover features is also in there. Um, and so and then uh, I think. We could have some advanced tasks that folks are interested to to demonstrate uh, stuff at that higher level as well. I think would be would be really powerful, um, and so uh, that would be good. Uh, uh, didcom v two did rotation after connection would be interesting. Would did rotation from from didcom one to two be a, or should um, we worry about that? Well, I think that depends because that's all the, that's part of the unqualified dids being gone. Um, so no, but I mean that, explicitly going from Dincom one to two, so that you right you're actually you start upgrading. on one and and get to yeah. two. Well, really, what you're doing is you're rotating from an unqualified did that isn't didcom v one capable to a to a did that is didcom v two capable, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and so that that's part of it, and then. Uh, there's also this oh, behavior did come v2 of, of okay. rotating after the connection right so if you scan an invitation something then you then you can rotate to another did which is uh which is one of the possibilities uh there so so yeah so you're saying once you did you rotate your did to something that's capable you can receive either right yeah yeah so i think this these are these are possible good scoping things and then uh, and then the advanced tasks, you know, could, uh, we've done credential work before, obviously we've done that a lot. Um, and so we may as an extended task, you know, if, if folks want to demonstrate that as well, but of course, on top of didcom v2, then that could be a cool, um, a cool step to, to show there as well. But the primary goals would be to solve, 
this issues can you know can can we still uh, get to didcom v2 and work together on didcom v2 and that's a little lumpy again because veramo's never supported one and so having uh, veramo uh you know show just working with other projects on v2 would be great right um oh one thing that we could put here is um Some sort of basic interaction with the didcom demo, I think, would be interesting as well, um, as a as a possible target there. Yeah, so discuss this post DIC and get the scope right, and then the potential target end of end of July will need enough time that folks can target and make the progress on the things they need in advance, but also, uh, you know, it gives us a, a deadline to sort of get together and make that stuff happen. So I think mean, that's very cool. Um, Participants, uh, you know, Aries, Akpai, uh, Credo, um, Veramo, I think would be another great participant in that. Cool. Uh, any other thoughts about the Interruptathon? Yeah. Okay, let's uh, rewind to the VDR proxy. Uh, Steven, did you get the issues worked out with the other PR? Yep, you did. Perfect. Okay, so VDR proxy, this was, um, we've discussed this, Steven, uh, last week um, yeah. and talked our way through it and about it and all the things. Um, the, um, there was a handful of conversation uh, points yeah. Um, uh, as it related, uh, James had some suggestions about stuff. Um, and so, uh, and, and we had talked a little bit about caching this last week. I don't know if we want to do anything about it in this version or not. Um, but it's possible for the VDR proxy to cache ledger, ledger assets. Absolutely. Yeah. And so you could declare that caching is out of scope for this particular version, then produce another one, or, you know, we could put some language in there about caching, I think would both be. Uh, acceptable options, just depending on the priorities and the, and the desired speed to get this to get this out. Yeah, um, the big thing that we, we think should drive this, and so um, this is a bit. I've asked the VC Wallet team to take a look at this, but the the question is, at what level do the queries come in? Um, and that's what I'd like to understand first, which is, are we are we getting an object? Are we getting a transaction? Um, what is it that we would be proxying a request for, which is kind of interesting? Um, what, how does this best fit in Bifold, for example? Um, so that's the first thing they're going to look at is um, take a look at practically what is the best way to put this into bifold as a concrete example of what we need and so it can tell so that that team can tell us okay here is the um the the, the type of request that will be send it will be proxying via this mechanism does that make sense yep if we force them and say oh you have to request this by transaction id <laughs> on a ledger well that's not going to help them much um but what but equally i don't know exactly what is the best way for them um to use this so uh, i think that's the best way to get the requirements on it so that's the first the first step we're going to do and then take a look at, at at the best way to implement thereafter right Cool. So <clears throat> you want more feedback on that and specifically in the how folks are going to consume this and then you're going to come back yeah. and update this. Yeah, exactly. Perfect. So that's the next step on this. Excellent. And then the idea is sort of um, take there and then do some implementation work. Um, we think we might use DRPC since it's already implemented. Um, it It is a little different. So we've got to think of how best it fits in. So we are taking a look at whether it's a 
independent one or or do we do take a shortcut initially just to use DRPC since it's there and available in both um, both uh, Credo and um, Akapai? Well, it's there in both, but the actual understanding of the specific DRPC implementation is not. That would still need to be created, right? Exactly. The handling of it, yes, exactly. So the ton the yep. tunneling is there, but the handling needs to be created in in, in both exactly. cases. Right? Exactly. Yep. Yep. Right. Um, I haven't written about this yet. My general opinion is is that if you're writing something that ex exists already in gRPC, then gRPC tunneling makes a lot of sense. If you're writing something additionally in gRPC tunneling over didcom, then it might make sense just to write it in didcom natively to get yeah. the other advantages that that has. And just so, to be clear, um, not gRPC, which I think you've said a couple of times. What did you say? Uh, DRPC or JSON, JSON RC. Uh, oh, yeah, JSON. yeah. Same th yeah, yeah. My, my comments are generally applied to tunneling, though, right? Yes. Okay, that's fine. Just we're not using yeah, yeah. gRPC at all, and that's a whole other ballpark. So I just want to make clear we're not using gRPC Thanks. at all. <laughs> Thanks for the clarification. I totally heard that wrong. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Awesome. Okay. Comments on there so that we know what we talked about. Um, that's good. Uh, any other any other stuff on the VDR proxy? No, I think that's sufficient. So uh, by way of uh, sort of peripheral interest, Stephen and I are both mentors on a uh, Hyperledger summer intern project. Does it have a name for that? It's not like summer of code or something. That's the Google thing. It's a Hyperledger mentorship program. Hyperledger mentorship what program, call. yeah. And yeah. so, what the, what the pro, one of the projects we're uh, we're working on together is uh, for an indie read replica, um, and the idea that you could have a piece of software that is capable of being a read replica of all the indie transactions without being a full consensus node. The um, <clears throat> and so we would just been interviewing folks as part of that process. The reason I bring that up is because one of the things that you could actually do is add didcom support with this VDR proxy protocol to a read replica. In addition to other places it could be used, that's one of the possibilities. And so it'll be interesting to see how this develops over the summer and where we get to. Um, but we've talked before about the, on, on the indie side, that a read replica allows us to add other ways to read things um, without really disrupting the, uh, the the consensus nodes at all because they don't have any extra work to do. It's it's just uh, something added to the read replica itself. So anyway, that that's kind of a cool little angle here that I wanted to bring up that there's the potential for a protocol like this to be supported uh, on that in order to sort of get around this uh, this this corporate firewall issue as it relates yeah. to communication with the ledger. So um, I understand as well um, on the corporate firewall issue um, the. There's a team in Brazil, Brazil, um, using this same stack, and they've come up with a solution as well. So they already have implemented something. Um, so um, we've been looking at that as well. Um, Did you have links so for that? I don't have the details. Plessio on our uh, on the BC Gov team has been talking to them. Um, so not quite sure be, what they've done. Yeah, that'd be super cool to see. Or have them present yeah. here. That would be cool too. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. That would be cool. Okay. Talked about DidCon V2 and the Interopathon. Um, we talked about the mediator reconfiguration a bunch. Has anyone found time to make any progress there? Okay, um, that uh, that's a that's an open thing that we uh, we need to get to. Um, the the summary of that for anyone who wasn't in the past couple of weeks was that we discovered that the the coordinate mediation protocol had no provision for the mediator to offer new configuration um, to folks are, that they already had a relationship with. Uh, this, when you request mediation in the beginning, the, 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 the yes answer comes back with, and here's the did to use in, in all of your routing, but there, there's not a provision in the protocol to actually update that and to say, hey, I know I gave you another one before, here's the one you need to use now. Um, and so, um, and that might be motivated by infrastructure changes or a variety of things. Um, and so, uh, and so providing a new a new routing did is, is something that will make that protocol more robust will definitely be a version bump of that protocol 
um, and then can be used to uh, solve a variety of issues um, that, that prevents you from needing to just move to a whole new instance of a mediator uh, in, in order to make that happen. Um, so that's a, that's a lot less work, which is, which is convenient. Um, so yeah. Um, any, the other thing that we have is the, um, we had this uh, harmonized chat uh, thing that was also then separately presented. Um, I don't see him here. Uh, th this was separately presented over in the DIDCOM working group, uh, but with a with sort of a more advanced sort of way of doing this for, for chat, which is really cool. Um, let's see, Ariel, who I saw before but don't see now, it brought up the, the, the sub connection. Uh, this is, uh, lines up really well with the concept of, a, of DIDCOM sessions that we had imagined for the next version of DIDCOM, but actually could be implemented on this version of DIDCOM with, with in, in, a, in a more minor way. Um, yeah. And so that, that's interesting there too. Stephen? Um, Sam, Sam, I have a topic that we've run across lately that we're working on a bit. Yeah. Um, it's so it, it it stems from a combination of um, redirect. Um, the, the basic problem comes from um, QR codes, the use of QR codes that are too dense, um, to invitations that are too large. Um, for various reasons, but combines with the need to support some kind of um, deep linking in a way that works with um, iOS and and Android. We know about the limitations of iOS and all that stuff, but this is so this is slightly different. But basically, the way we've defined the various out of band protocols allows for a a shortened URL. And what we want to do is allow for a URL. It's kind of similar to out of band, um, the 700 RFC, RFC um, out of band redirect 700, I believe it's called. Um, Yeah. And it's um, what we want to do is slightly different than this, I believe. But um, in both DIDCOM 1 and DIDCOM 2, there's a way to pass a URL um, that gets redirected. And what we want to do is make that and make the URL itself an argument on the deep link on the deep link. Um, so that the idea would be the recipient reads the URL, the deep link click kicks in to do whatever a deep link does. And then the recipient of the deep link, notably a wallet, would then take the payload, which is a full URL, and resolve the full URL to get back the actual invitation. Oh, right. So and in this I particular way. In, in reading this, I don't think I, I see this as doing that. But that's what we want. Well, it's so. But what you're talking about here is that this contains the message, but it's long. So I think right. what you're saying was is that you use this in the deep link style, so that it does the deep linky stuff. Yeah. But then what comes after that is this: instead of being actually just the full message, is in fact the the short link that then can be resolved for the full message. Right. It's an actual URL. Right. And if but you scroll down, idea, idea, but it, the, the fact that this URL is the less interesting bit than the fact that it's much shorter than this. Yes. Yeah. Scroll down. But what we've done before is we've said, oh, you know, here's the, um, see, this is the shortened. We use the shortened. Uh, so they have OOB here. Yeah. And then OOB ID is a base 64 url encoded url is it the full url yeah so this here which resolves to an out-of-band presentation okay which is okay yeah yeah is then okay, base 64 yeah. encoded and then and then st stuck you know right onto the 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 deep okay, link good. thing the deep link thing okay that's what we need 
Okay. And you'll notice the density difference between this and this. Is there yeah, yeah, exactly. And that's what we're looking for is getting that density uh, consistent so that there's a, a fixed length of it. Okay. I'll go through okay. this again and we'll take a look to see, but that's what we're working on now to, to make it that there's one way to basically all the QR codes would use this style so that there's no more of, you know, worrying about the length of your, your, um, your invitation and therefore the length of your uh, the density of your QR code. With the consideration that it cannot be resolved offline, which is often OK. Yes, yes. And how that plays into the whole BLE thing and all that stuff, that's a, that will probably come into play at some point. But we just want to get the initial problem solved at this point. That's what we're looking at. These same people might be looking at that problem as well. Right. Cool. Um, Daniel, you brought this up. This was the JSON LD creds implementation, not matching between Akapai and Credo. Any updates on that? Um, a fix has been merged for that one into Akapai. So I think that is resolved at this point. There's still some goofy things going on in terms of uh, there's some funny interactions between the Spherion uh, presentation exchange library and the expectations of Credo. Um, but I, I've raised that with, with Timo and others, and um, hopefully that'll be addressed at some point, but we're able to actually issue and, and present those credentials now. Okay, thank you for the update. Other things that we want to discuss. Um, one of the sessions I'm giving at EIC, I I can uh, partly credit credit Daniel for this, as he he proposed and got the session accepted, but then was unable to attend. Um, and so I'm, I'm pretending to be Daniel on TV. Um, uh, Steve McCowan and I are actually uh, pretending to be Daniel. We are we will be talking about post quantum cryptography and its effect and its effects on on decentralized identity. Um, and so um, that's probably worth giving a review here after we come back. Um, uh, the short answer is there'll be a large variety of did methods that need updates of one sort or another. And so the ability that we are focusing on to rotate from one did to another did is going to be important um, in our post quantum world so that you can continue relationships um, uh, using newly updated dids that are that are you know quantum resistant um, or use quantum resistant technology, uh, you know, crypto suites, etc. Um, and so uh, there's also uh, updates that will be necessary to uh, to didcom um, over the next handful of years in order to solve that as well. That work needs to get started soon because the spec work comes before the library work comes before the implementation work comes before the deployment work and the deployment dates are the ones that that folks are mostly focusing on. And so sort of the farther up the stack you are, the faster that's got to go. So there'll be some efforts there. Um, don't have time to do it sufficient justice here, um, but that's something that we'll be able to, to present here after EIC, um, and then we can uh, consider what Aries needs to do in order to be able to adopt the stuff that comes along to solve the problem. Um, and so that that will be a that will be a worthy discussion to have as well. Um, this is of course not just disrupting us, but more or less everything. Um, uh, nearly, you know, I don't think there's going to be much. <clears throat> that isn't touched about this, except interestingly enough for symmetric key, uh, symmetric keys tend to not be affected by this, um, uh, mostly just public key cryptography that relies on factoring of large primes, which there are quite a number of, of algorithms in common use. And so that will be, we'll be we, can, uh, we can discuss that a little bit after EIC. Um, uh, so that will be an upcoming topic as well. There's not a ton of work because we don't do the crypto stuff ourselves exactly. We just use crypto, but we'll need to we'll need to have some 
some discussion about what we do to be ready for it when it arrives so that we can adopt that um, without, uh, without too much grief. Yeah, um, other, any other topics in the past couple of, uh, the next couple of minutes? And again, a reminder that we're not meeting next week. All right, folks. I think that's it for today. Then, appreciate you being here, being here, and all the discussion, all the work that you do. Uh, keep it up, and uh, we will see you in this meeting in two weeks, but likely other places before then. I hope your week is a great one. Yeah, hey, folks. <laughs>